I thought I'd explain uh, why I bought this lens. This is the Canon 400mm f2.8 uh, version 2 and um, I bought it a couple of years ago and when I was buying it I found a very distinct lack of reviews online. I think the only one I found was Jared Polin who was actually reviewing the Canon 1DX Mark II at the time and he was using this for photographing uh, an athletics meeting. Many of my upcoming videos will be about wildlife photography uh, so you may find it odd that I chose this lens as opposed to a 500 or 600 millimeter f4 uh, but I'm an amateur wildlife photographer but a semi-professional sports photographer uh, so those two were really out of the question when it came to earning any money from my photography. However there were a number of different options for me to choose when buying this lens and principally after much research I got it down to two possible lenses. One was the Canon 200 to 400 mm f4 and the other one was this one the 400 mm f2.8 um, and it took me a long time to decide why to go why I should go with this particular lens. The 200 to 400 mm lens is clearly, clearly a very versatile lens. With the built-in 1.4 converter, you have a 200 to 560 mm uh, lens and, and the ability to zoom in and out of the action as it comes closer to you and moves further away. And I did find it a popular lens with Olympic photographers. Um, people like Jeff Cable from, from the US raved about that lens when shooting water polo and I can see why, having shot water polo myself, uh, it would be an ideal lens for that. However, the limiting factor I found when choosing a lens for myself was uh, the fact that I don't shoot at the Olympics and a lot of the venues I shoot in are very, very dark in comparison. If I show you some examples, this image was taken during last season's British Water Polo League at the International Sports Village in Newport, South Wales. It was taken at f3.2 at 1 800th of a second, which is the minimum shutter speed you need for uh, water polo in order to freeze the action and, and get the water droplets. But nevertheless, given the darkness of the venue, I was having to shoot at ISO 10,000. If I'd stopped it down to f4, or if f4 had been the uh, minimum aperture available to me, then clearly I would have been shooting at a much higher ISO again. This next image was taken during last year's tour of Britain up at the Winlater Pass in Cumbria. It was quite a wet and dark afternoon in a wooded area and again I shot this at f2.8 with quite a high shutter speed and an ISO of 1250. I did review some other photographers images taken with the 200-400mm f4 and this lens uh, to compare the two. And in particular, I looked at images taken by Damien Strohmeyer and Peter Reed Miller, who were two top American sports photographers. And in 2017, they both shot the Super Bowl, Peter with this lens and Damien with the 200-400. And I preferred uh, Peter's images. I felt the background was cleaner because there was uh, a little bit more background blur than those taken by uh, Damien. And that was quite an important factor. Uh, for me. Um, my personal preference for images is to try and get as much blur in the background as possible. Here are two images from a recent rugby match I photographed and by being able to blur the background you can see how the action pops out of the, uh, the image. In addition in the second image this was taken quite late on in the afternoon on a cold winter's evening under the floodlights and was taken at f2.8 at ISO 4000. If I'd used an f4 lens, clearly I would have had to have shot at ISO 8000 instead. I have no problem using extenders in my photography and by using this, the uh, two times uh, extender version three, I get an 800 millimeter f5.6 lens. I've also got the 1.4 extender on order that should be with me sometime next week and that'll give me 560 millimeters at f4 
and 560 millimeters is just between the 500 and 600 millimeter f4 lenses that people prefer for their wildlife photography so there i have a 400 millimeter sports prime lens but with the, the ability to shoot a focal length that are more geared towards wildlife and if i really want extra reach i can put all that on my canon 7d and have a 1280mm lens f5.6. So although it doesn't have the zoom feature, it is still a very versatile lens. Uh, here are two images from a recent trip to South Africa that I took at 800mm. The first one is a laughing dove, and you can see the nice, clean, blurred background. And this second one is of a pygmy mongoose. And if you look carefully at the road, you can see just how shallow the depth of field is. If you found this video useful, please uh, like and subscribe to my uh, channel. And please look out for my upcoming uh, videos from my photographic trip to Scotland, photographing the wildlife up there. Thanks very much.